help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description. Surah Al-Fatiha itself is called As-Salat. This is a name of it, As-Salat. And this is found in the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anh. He said that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah said, قسمت الصلاة بيني وبين عبدي نصفين that I divided a salat meaning the fatiha I divided it between me and my slave in half so when the slave says Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Allah says Hamidani Abdi Allah says this is a conversation there is a dialogue you need to feel this when you're reading Surah Al-Fatiha in order for it to have an effect on you and treat your stress and your calamities and also your depression and your anxiety. When you say all oh, praise belongs to the Lord of the worlds, Allah would say, Hamidani Abdi, my slave has shown gratitude to me. You know what that means? It means that Allah has acknowledged your gratitude towards him. You know, often most of the times we sit down and we say, did Allah hear our praise? Did Allah recognize it? Does Allah hear me? Can Allah hear me? Does he know that I'm praising him and thanking him? Yes. In Surah Al-Fatiha, he says, Hamidani Abdi, my slave has been grateful to me. So Allah acknowledges it. Then when the slave says, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Allah says, Athna alayya Abdi, my slave has praised me. Once again, Allah acknowledges your praise of him. You don't worry to say, did Allah hear me? Did he acknowledge? Did he accept from me? You just be concerned about reading Al-Fatiha. And the response is there. Yes, Allah has acknowledged your praise of him. When the slave says, Maliki yawmiddin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Majjadani abdi. My slave has glorified me and honored me. And Allah has acknowledged your glorification of him. And when the slave says, You alone we worship and you alone we seek your help. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, That's between me and my slave. Look at the conversation now. It's become personal. It's like Allah is saying, this is between you and I. No one's involved in this. This is between you and me. And for you is what you ask. You haven't even asked yet. The asking of guidance is coming next. <laughs> but because you've shown gratitude to Allah by saying Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen and you've praised Allah and you've glorified Him by saying Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm deen Now Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is happy with the servant. He's pleased with the servant. To the point where he says, and for my servant is whatever he asks for. You're in a position to ask now. So when the slave says, al-mustaqim, guide us to the straight path. Surat al-ladheena an'amta alayhim, ghayri al-maghdubi alayhim wa ladhalleen. Guide us to the straight path. Guide us to the path that you be of those who you bestowed your favor and your mercy upon. Other than the path of those who earned your anger and your wrath. And those who are misguided, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, That is for my slave. And surely for him is what he requested. And Allah azawajal continues to give us guidance. Whether you realize or you don't, that's because you're reading Surah Al-Fatiha at least 17 times a day in your salat. And you ask, why am I here tonight? Why have I chosen on a Friday night to come and sit? When I could have done a million other things and listen to the word of Allah being recited and being explained. You know why? Because perhaps during this day, Allah Azzawajal, He heard that sarat al mustaqim of yours and He's guided you. He guided you to this event so you can hear something that will benefit you in your relationship with Allah. Allahu Akbar. My brothers and sisters in Islam, let's take a dive. Ayah by ayah in Surah Al-Fatiha. I'll share as much as I can with you until my time is up. And let's extract how each and every single ayah helps us cure depression, anxiety, and distress. My brothers and sisters in Islam, 
when you read Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, the first ayah in Surah Al Fatiha. And of course, there is a difference of opinion among the ulama, but there is no doubt that Al Basmala has a heavy weight in Islam. So now, when you say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, how does that treat? How does it cure depression and anxiety and distress? Because when you say Bismillah, this ba is ba ul isti'ana. You're seeking Allah's help. So now, in whatever calamity you're in, whatever is bothering you, you're being forced to seek Allah's help. That's what Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim is telling you. It's telling you give up, it's telling you surrender. It is telling you, you cannot do this life on your own. If you try to face life on your own, you will be in misery and you will fail miserably. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim is telling you, face this life with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. And so there was a companion by the name of Talha ibn Ubaidillah radiallahu anhu. On the day of Uhud, he experienced a calamity. His finger was cut off. Imagine a finger cut off. You know what he did? He said, hiss. Yani he said, Sss, like this. That's a normal reaction. Anyone will do this if your body was injured. Imagine a, a finger being cut. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam heard him. And he said to him, he said to him, Ama law qulta bismillah la rafa'atka al-malaika. He said to him, if you just said Bismillah, the angels would have came and they would have raised you. Allahu Akbar. Face your calamity with Bismillah before you utter words of pain in this worldly life. And just like Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was thrown, he was launched into a fire. And that fire is a calamity, no doubt. It is supposed to burn a person. He was launched into the fire. He didn't scream up in the air as he's landing. Rather, he said, Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. He said, sufficient is for me, my Lord. And he is the best to rely upon. And what happened? Allah Azzawajal's help was with him. Allah Azzawajal made the fire cool and peaceful upon him. And just like Yunus alayhi salam, he ends up in a calamity, in the belly of a whale, in the darkness of the night in the depth of the ocean these are three darknesses if he put his hand in front of him he couldn't see it he literally reached a rock bottom and even then he did not look for worldly means and he did not rely upon himself imagine you are stuck in a situation like that the first thing we do is we take the phone and the light and see how can i escape he didn't resort to worldly means because he knows I cannot face calamities by myself. If I entrust myself, I will fail miserably. So he said, La ilaha illa ant, subhanak inni kuntu min al He faced his calamity with Allah, with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah azza wa jal would save him at the end. Allah said, Falawla anahu kana min al musabbihin. Had he not been from those who praised Allah and worshipped Allah, he would have remained in the belly of that whale until the day of judgment. He would have remained in his suffering and his calamity, and he would have remained in his depression and anxiety and distress until the day of judgment. But he faced it with Bismillah. He faced it with the name of Allah, and Allah Azzawajal saved him. So when you read Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, it is forcing you to surrender and stop and face this worldly life with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah's aid is me and it is close and don't give up my beloved brothers and sisters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala divided surah fatiha into half between him and his slave Allah answers with every verse you recite from surah al-fatiha my dear brothers and sisters understand this surah the surah fatiha is also known as the surah of shifa the surah of cure so recite it often and try to understand the meaning of this surah and apply it in your life surah fatiha 
is a surah which can be used as a treatment to cure your diseases recite this surah the companions used to recite it and the companions used to use it as a cure allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept shifa in this surah recite quran understand the quran learn the quran memorize the quran and start everything in your life with bismillah with the name of allah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make things easy for you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put barakah in your work don't forget allah when you remember allah allah remembers you allah says in the quran fadhkuruni adhkurukum remember me and i will remember you when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remember you what else do you need in your life so always moist your tongue in the remembrance of allah the quran itself is a dhikr recite the quran whatever you have memorized repeat it and recite it throughout the day make your tongue which always remembers allah which always does dhikr allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves it and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will shower mercy and blessings and allah will give barakah in your life make it a daily habit to recite quran and when you recite the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes your heart feel peace serene serene and tranquil allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives happiness in your life may allah forgive our shortcomings may allah give us the understanding of the quran and may allah grant us jannatul firdaus alaa help us build an islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org link in the description